had the MRI exam on, on Ryan. How's things looking with his ankle? Uh, similar to where they were last year, you know, and uh, so we'll see see how it goes. You know, we've got some time here for our next game, and you know, Ryan will get uh, you know treat round the clock, and you know, this would be a big week to to see how he progresses, and then we'll make a decision on on his availability next week and, and what we do then. If he's not available, is it maybe time to take a look at Will? Uh, it, it'll be one of those two guys if Ryan can't go. I don't know who that would be yet. We'll see, you know how they continue to practice. You know, it'll be good to get them some work this week, maybe from with some guys that they haven't uh, necessarily worked with. You know, they've been working on the show team during the season. You know, so I'm excited to get both those guys some reps with, you know, with some of our offensive guys and see how they handle that. Malik did yesterday when he came in, and, and where have you seen improve from him on the practice field? Well, I think that there, there was some improvement. Um, you know, I think that's a tough spot. You know, we, we hit it down there in, in the goal line and just the the operation of where we were down two scores, not having, um, you know, the timeouts and just needing to know, like, just not taking a sack and not having to hold on to that ball at just the time is is critical. So I think that that's, you know, that's tough to evaluate. You know, I think he could have probably, you know, gotten rid of the football or, you know, tried to find, you know, somebody a, a little quicker. But, you know, I think that uh, – it was good to see him get us off to a good start, you know, with, with the keeper and then, you know, obviously finding Tajay and, and getting the ball out of his hand. Um, so just not a whole lot of, you know, work outside of just that situation. Do you want you Malik get... and Will to uh, – you clear everybody out for the bye or do you want them to stay behind maybe and, you know, do a little boning up and getting ready? I don't know what boning up means. <laughs> studying. Oh, studying. I'm sure that they're, 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 they're studying – uh, every day that they go home, I, I'm positive of that. I've seen those guys handle the game plan and be prepared and know the opponent. Um, but I think that there's a certain element to, you know, all of us of just trying to, to uh, you know, get some things accomplished here. And those guys will keep studying. And, you know, there won't be a game plan. You know, I mean, there won't be a game plan for Atlanta. It'll be um, just understanding and watching coverages and progressions and defenses and, you know, having pressure answers, right? And having being able to see uh, and identify when when pressure may be coming. Uh, I think that's that's a huge part of, you know, being a quarterback is kind of having answers already in your head as you're going through, you know, the cadence and seeing what you know, whether they're holding the disguise and then all of a sudden at the last minute, you know, being able to to recognize some of these things and, and either have the correct read and put the ball in the right spot and get rid of it quickly or having an answer uh, for for the rest of the offense into a play that that we think can be successful. That developmental process for those two young guys, you know, being on the scout team, like how do you like the way that has? Come I, I like it, but it's the scout team is hard, and that's why we try to put it in their language and say, okay, call this play what we call it. All right, I don't think that that's fair just to look up there and see, you know, a generic card and I'm like just read it out. I you know, I don't care where the defense wants you to throw the ball. Like just throw it to the guy that's open or. You know, take control of the huddle, um, getting them in and out, making sure that you know you're you're practicing all the things that you would want to practice. Uh, were you you know running our offense? So I think that that's been good. Uh, the seven on seven stuff and those throws that they've been having on Monday uh, has been good. The stuff they do after practice uh, with with some of the uh, practice squad receivers going through the game plan, calling the huddle going out of formations, like they go up and down the field. It's just trying to find different ways to, to make sure that they're one are ready and one are improving and developing because we just only have so many guys to, to run full speed reps with. Did you say the injury, Mike, just cost you for Will and, and can't cost you evaluation of him? And then how, what have you been able to figure out about him since the, since the season started? Well, that was, um, you know, those preseason reps are, are critical. Um, but have also, you know, seen some really good practice reps, seen, seen stuff through camp and then, uh, just didn't feel like it was the, you know, didn't feel like he was ready to, to go into to games under those circumstances. Um, you know, seen a, com a more comfortable player, just a more comfortable person, a rookie, you know, it's a unique, unique situation I, coming in this league as a quarterback with an existing quarterback with a, you know, player in his second year, that's unique. And I think he's handled that well. I think you know, 
his comfort level and just being around here has, has improved. Would you say similar to last year for Ryan? You mean when he first got hurt as opposed to last year when he needed surgery and all that? Yeah, I would say similar to earlier in the year. Did Nick do enough to win the job at left tackle? Uh, well, I will still evaluate that, but I, what I did appreciate that Nick was, um, he was into it. He acted like he wanted to be out there, acted like he, he loved it and was, you know, pushing piles, jumping over the pile, you know, just doing some of those things that, that we feel like are critical and a way to squeeze the last couple yards out of every run. He was down there. Um, had a really nice block on um, Tajay's uh, screen along with some other people, along with Brew and some other guys that were out there in front of that thing. It was a pretty cool clip. Is healthy? Is he automatically the guy? Or, or is there anything? Yeah, I mean, Ryan. No, I mean, Ryan. Will be, if he can go, Ryan will be a quarterback. What else goes into that evaluation, Mike, at left tackle, in determining what you want to do there? Um, you know, do they know how to do their job? Do they, you know, execute the, the, the play? And the style in which we want it done, you know, can you get into the line of scrimmage on zone plays, you know, get to the right leverage, run off the football, you know, combination blocks, can you displace alignment from their gap and climb up to the second level, uh, play pass that you're, you know, firm on in the inside, not getting beat in the middle of the pocket. And then, you know, third down, it's about, you know, blocking the edge rusher or, playing for the game or being able to, to slide out on, on pressure based on whatever the call is. So there's a, I think there's an assignment and there's an execution and then there's also a, a, a play style and a play demeanor that I think is, is important for offensive linemen. You mentioned, I guess, Nicholas's energy and just the way he played. I know Jeffrey in the locker room after the game talked about wanting to see guys out there that want to fight and be out there. Do you have – Decisions like that to make at certain positions based on don't have a lot of options. Yeah, you know I mean we don't. You know, we got we got what we got right now. So um, my job this week is to show us, show them uh, things that we've done that that we can't win with, and things that we have done that will be the reason why we win because there's there's a lot of them. You know, and, yeah. The offensive line, excuse me, the offensive line has struggled blocking all season long. It's not a new problem. We experienced that last year. Why wasn't there more done in the off season to address that position group? Well, I would disagree that that's they've struggled. They've struggled on uh, third down. Hasn't been our best. Um, ran the football yesterday against a team that hadn't, you know, there hadn't been too many ten and twelve yard runs uh, on that clip. So I think we stood up to them and we blocked them and. You know, I thought the protection against Indy, if we can stay out of a drop back passing game, I think that that's uh, really critical. I would say that that's a, that's a tall order uh, for, for us and, and a lot of other teams. Is just when you get into a drop back passing game. Um, so I think that that's, uh, that's something that we, we certainly want to make sure that we complement our, our run game and our offense with the ability to move the pocket, the ability to max up. You know, we saw a lot of those cool opportunities against Indy, didn't have enough of them uh, against Baltimore when we did have you know, some of those play passes. But um, you know, we'll have to be better on third down you know, when, they, when they do run games and pressure. So that's, uh, you know, that, that's where we're at right now before in your time here and uh, turned it into an AFC championship game appearance. So what do you have to do as a head coach to hold this locker room together and keep vibes high despite a challenging start? Well, I mean, it starts this week. It starts tomorrow. It starts with, you know, my message of, you know, showing them the things that, you know, we've done well enough and then just showing them the things that, that we can't do and, and think that we'll win. And, and making sure that the, that the standard is it's coming to work and being consistent and uh, you know, demanding, um, you know, the accountability is, is huge. But the, but the ones that, that can have to do a little bit more and the ones that haven't have to, have to improve. What do you think of Jeffrey's comments about just some guys need to decide if they want to play and want to be here? I mean, Jeff's earned the right to say a lot as he wants, but, you know, I think that that could go for for a lot of guys. You know, we 
We've hit the quarterback three times the last two games, so we'd have to, you know, prepare there too. That's tough to win, and it's tough to cause turnovers when you hit the quarterback twice in two games. Chris, there for first uh, Avery, or excuse me, at Avery in there for Fulton for a little bit. Was that injury related, or was that? Uh, no, wanted to play. You know, I mean, wanted to try to give, you know, Trey, you know, a little bit of work and see how that went, and you know, I didn't think Christian was, you know, he he was better. He wasn't as challenged as. Certainly the, the the Colts game, and that's how it goes. And he triggered, and he ran some toss cracks, and those corners have to show up. And you know he was a willing participant in, in that. And when they ran the toss crack, and he tried to run a switch route or something, he communicated and pushed it off, you know, to the safety. And so again, it's, you get beat in this league as a corner. You got to come back and you know compete, and you can't let things spiral. And that goes for all of us. You can't let you know, a mistake turned into something that's detrimental and let your technique lag and your, your competitive spirit lag. I didn't get any of that from either of you. I apologize. I don't, I can't tell you what we're going to do tomorrow, let alone against the Falcons. So just see who's available to practice, see who can improve, try to have a plan for each guy, guys that, that need some rest and recovery. Need some guys that are going to need some more reps, some some speed reps that maybe they don't get a ton of uh, during the season. Some younger guys try to figure that out each and, and every day, and uh, and go from there. Are you frustrated with Tier Tart not being out there for multiple weeks now and taking to social media things like that? I didn't see the social media. You know, I mean, I think that that's you get you know back and forth uh, conversations probably never do anybody any good uh, on social media. Maybe I'll read the mean tweets tomorrow. That'd be my introduction. I'll read all the the funny stuff that they say about us or me specifically. I did that one year. I think we ended up winning 12 games. So this coach sucks. This guy stinks and, you know, ended up having a different tune. Guys all laughed about it. Um, what I'm frustrated by is I'm frustrated when, when we lose. I am. There's... I mean, put a lot into this, and, uh, and and again, we have to make sure that that we're doing everything we can, that when we're not out there, that we're doing everything we can uh, to get back out there. You know, the other message that I that I try to tell them, because, you know, again, this is not talking about my career. I played in Nashville. Football. I got hurt, right? I went through injury. But just the, and the maybe the, the mentality or the appearance that you're – doing everything that you can to get back out there, that you're as engaged as you possibly can in the meetings, that you're doing as much conditioning or you're doing as much treatment as you possibly can. Uh, because I think whether that makes you get back any quicker, but at least leaves no doubt that you're doing everything that you possibly can. That's just a reminder that I try to tell all of them, knowing that they're, we're going to deal with injuries throughout the course of the year. I hope that we can see him maybe even this week going with, uh, you know, even being able to throw with Will and Malik, um, figuring that Ryan probably is not going to throw this week. And hopefully we can get him out in some capacity. Um, but, uh, you know, he looks good and, you know, keep progressing. Like you said yesterday, it's difficult to have an identity without winning. Sure. confidence that the message – identity that you're pushing on this team to try to get them to have that they're completely bought in and still where they have been? Like I mean, I think they are. I mean, I thought we were going to win the game. We threw an interception. The quarterback couldn't push off. We threw an, I thought we were going to win the game. Like, we just ran for 13 yards. We ran for nine yards. We had run on second and one. It was third and two. Ryan tried to throw to Chig, and he couldn't push off his ankle, and we threw a pick. But up until then, I, I meant – I don't know, maybe teams go down there and fight one for six in a red zone. However, the ball got down there, whether the defense did it, whether the punt team or whether the offense left in the ball down there. But I know we stood up there and stopped them however many times inside the 10, inside the five with with Kyle Pecco chasing guys down, making extra efforts, knocking guys back. I mean, we're, we're going to fight. Like, if you want our identity, we're going to fight. We ain't going to quit. Like we've been through this before. You could go down there and game like yesterday, thirty-five to three or whatever. Like we're we're gonna fight. They're gonna fight. 
And then our job is to, to eliminate some of the mistakes, try to get a little bit of the details better, be better on third down, you know, score these, these chances and we get the ball down there in a the red zone. You know, I mean, you saw Derek, you know, scored from the 15 or whatever. And, but you know, got Chris Moore on a slip screen that looked really, really good until it wasn't and missed the block and on third and eight, you know, so it's like, we're going to go through this red zone and make sure that you know, we're doing everything that we can to, to put ourselves in favorable positions to score touchdowns. I, you guys know that, but you know, got to be better and you know, run it better. Can't have third and eights in the red zone. There's like, there's nowhere for them to cover, right? They're just going to just pack you in there. And then it's like, well, you throw a slip screen or throw, throw a quick pass and hope somebody, you know, breaks a tackle, but it's not a normal third and eight out in the field where, you know, there's going to be some more space. So third and eight is, is tough and, you know, we'll have to, to keep, keep working it, keep scheming it and keep practicing it. Probably both in concussion protocol and I, I don't know. I mean, I would imagine, you know, I mean, I don't want to misspeak, but I know that they've been evaluated. I've seen both of those guys for, for, you know, sake of clarity, I would imagine that they're in the protocol. I think they're both doing well, spoke to them this morning and then saw them both when they came in here. Um, so they were able to fly back with us. And, and I think that, you know, they're doing as well as they possibly could be doing. I don't want to like misspeak here, but they they probably would imagine there is some form or fashion in the protocol. It seemed like Hamilton on both those hits. Huh? Kyle Hamilton on both those hits. How would you feel about that ejection? Is that the way? I think it's probably warranted. I mean, you know, the one with Wiley. I don't know, like, just kind of forearmed or whatever. Josh is, you know, he's a linear target, and he's going to have to get his pads down and. You know, protect himself. Uh, you know, I would imagine that the the one there in the past, the defenseless, and uh, our players in this league have done a good job for the most part of trying to get that out of the game. And they don't. It, it's never going to be perfect. Uh, as fast as it is, and as quickly as it happens, and sometimes the the body posture of where the football is, and that you know these guys then kind of crunching down and then the target lowers, the head comes down. You know, we just talk to our guys about hitting at or below the football. And it's really all, all you can do is if you, you want to avoid one, an injury yeah. to you or the other player, you know, or or a, a penalty and a fine. What'd you say to Kyle about the punt return? I mean, we just we just got to catch our punts and, you know, that's, and, and, I, and I've got to help them. I, I do, I, ha I have to transition. Um, better you know from the situation of what's going on are they going for it you know shane what are you know hey what do you like on the on third down um you know what what are they what are they thinking about doing uh and then being able to transition to you know our gray team which is our defense d stay you know and and telling them to, to to stand in the end zone and not do anything so i can help them but that also um you know we, we have to we have to with the catch punts in the national in the national football league. Would you just not have a returner in a Yeah, I mean exactly. Like just making sure like guys, we, we got a great stop, you know, again. And so I have to transition more quickly from from what was happening and continue to to work a play ahead like I try to do. Um, but in that particular case, you know, we're seeing what they're doing based on where they're at on the field. Are they gonna try to go for it? Um, making sure that we got you know, our, our defensive personnel out there as opposed to punt return or whatever substitution group and, you know, just just being better there, everybody. And then, you know, being sound and that, you know, whether it's a long return, a muff punt, like those, that's, those are, you know, can't happen. He said yesterday that some of the problems might not be correctable on the, on the team. On what well, I mean, that's in life. You know what right, I mean? Right. Like you can't make you can't make yourself any taller. You can't make you know what I mean? It's like so whatever we have, I, again, the issues that have come up I've talked about is the third down on offense, the red zone. Um we have to be better on third down on defense. Our pass defense has to be better. Um you know, we got covering punts, like 
mean, we got every gunner that we got out there. They're both undrafted free agent rookies, and they're fighting off. But I was just gonna, I was just say, if, if, if that is the, the case, I mean, should any decisions be made at all looking more towards long term than, than for just this year if, if the problems? Well, I think we're always looking for uh, this year. And, 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 you know, problems. I mean, you know, Anthony Kendall, Matt Jackson, like they earned the right to be on this team. And Anthony – has done a fantastic job. And when they punted, Anthony took his guy in a single block and blocked him behind the line of scrimmage and, and knocked him on the ground. So, you know, we, we have to, you know, when, when we when we cover these punts, it's not just all on a gunner, right? We got to cast the net. We got to get our got to get our tails out of there. And we got to go down there and, and limit the space uh, that, that they have. Uh, and we didn't have that, you know, whether that was the gunners, the interior players, you know, we're all at fault. The only guy that made anything right was Stoney. It was an unbelievable effort to to get the guy on the ground and and, and allow the defense to defend what they could and, and give up uh, just three points there. So, um, you know, we're all – everything works in, in unison and then trying to get that, that unit execution is what we talked about earlier in this, this conversation with you guys is trying to get the players to understand starts with yourself – it starts with me, it starts with the coaches, and then it's, you know, about our position and it's about our unit and then ultimately about the team's success. Mike, it's week seven. Uh, maybe you would rather have the buy come later, but if for this team at this moment, is this maybe a good time to have this buy? It's the only time when it was coming, Teresa. It wouldn't matter what, you know, this is what you, what you make of it. And can we win this week? Can we win with our attitudes and our practice schedule and – getting stuff done and being open-minded to, to improve and to uh, get the information and, and, and translate it onto the field. That's all that matters. They like make a you know they're clearly a, a fast team. Mm -hmm. And I know speed, excuse me, is an area that you wanted to improve upon. But after that game, how do you feel you improved in that area as opposed to last year? Uh, we, can always, we can always be faster. Yeah, I mean, I think I'll say that forever. Like, we, we can always be faster. Do you anticipate making a change at punt returner, given Kyle's issues catching punts? So far? <laughs> well, I would imagine that we'll have as many guys that can catch a punt back there, just like we have in the previous weeks. Uh, Monty Hooker had a cast on his thumb. He's the backup punt returner. So, um, that's that's active on game day. Yeah. So, they only get 48 of them. We got Find some guys that have some versatility and whether that's catch punts, play other places, do other stuff. But it's not like we have six uh, punt returners on the game day roster. Do you Thanks. consider trading assets at the deadline and prioritizing a draft pick in next year's draft? I think we would always consider trying to strengthen the team, whether that's right now, this week, or in the future. Absolutely. Thanks. Gentry, what do you got? I mean, you got to get out there, Gentry. Get in there. <laughs> You asked yesterday about identity. Talked about you always want that the effort. You're talking about the physicality. Huh? Has that been to the level that you would like? Well, there were times again at times. You know, what I mean, and that's been the frustrating thing for me is because I'm going through these and watching the 375 clips on defense, and you're like, wow, they ain't, they're not moving the ball, and the quarterback's being affected. And then there's other times where the quarterback's able to to look over here and then progress and then find a window or a zone or we stop the run and there's nowhere for them to go and guys are swarming and then guys are blocked or staying on blocks or they go fast on third down and one and we, you know, it's like we, we, we talked all week. Like that's what they've done. They did it against the Colts and they did it against the Bengals and, you know, we have to be ready for these things. You only get so many opportunities to practice it but then you have to, when you get it in the game, be ready to nail it. Um, so it's just making sure now that, you know, we're getting all these little details and putting them all together because there are times, Gentry, where the identity is there, but to really hang your hat on it, um, you have to have some tangible results and, and, and some wins. But there's, it's been there. It just hasn't been there at the level that we've needed it to be.
being an NFL quarterback, and I think that's going to come in time, and he's worked tremendously hard on it. So uh, we look forward to him moving forward. With, with that growth, do you feel like that will allow the process to kind of speed up to where he's working through things faster? Yeah, you know, I think with anything, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. And uh, he went in there. It was a tough situation. It's, you know, the game's on the line. It's kind of a two-minute situation. But I thought he did a good job for us. And I just think as he continues to get more experience, continue to play and get his feet wet, um, I think you can continue to see him grow. As a young player, like you feel like, you know, you put him in that situation. He knows he has to make a play for you guys. How do you manage, like, trying to keep him from pressing too much but still going out there and, you know, helping you out? You know, we just ask him to go in there, relax, and, and, and don't force anything. Just go in there, take what the defense has given us, go through the reads, go through the progression, and, uh, you know, um, just try to try to execute the play the best of his ability. So we didn't want him to go out there and try to be Superman and try to do something that he couldn't do, and we just impressed that upon him when he went into the game. How's it been going to trying to evaluate both of those guys? I know you guys have been doing some things on Monday and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, and how, how has that gone? Do you feel like you've gained in that way in terms of the evaluation? Yeah, I, th I think it's been great for those guys. You know, obviously we've done some work on Mondays. They do work uh, after practice and uh, – They've both been really engaged in meetings. They both understand the game plan. They've both done a good job of asking good questions and understanding what their job is. And it's really to be a good caddy to Ryan right now. And, and they've done a good job of that. And I just think we're continuing to find ways to develop them and get them reps and, and get them thrown to different guys. And we'll continue to do that. How much difference is there for, for a guy like Malik or really anybody else between getting thrown into a game versus having a week? You know, first team reps, et cetera, et cetera, going into a game as a starter. Sure. Well, you know, that's the life of a backup quarterback. You got to be ready at any point to be thrown in there and, and operate, and the offense can't skip a beat. Now, ideally, in a perfect world, would you like somebody to have a week's worth of prep and everything? Yeah, but that's that's not the life that those guys are living right now. So not only do they have to know the offense like the, like the back of their hand, but they also have to get our defense ready for the looks that we're going to see. So uh, actually, I told them when the season started, their job's gotten actually harder because they have to know our offense with, with minimal reps and then be able to help our defense out in both ways. So I think the, both of them have done a great job of bouncing that out. Your experience, how much can you really glean from guys in practice versus how they execute in games when practice is all you have? You know, from from the guys that I've been around, I think it's a good indicator of where guys are going, you know, which way their trajectory is going. Like, there's nothing like live game reps, and you do the best that you can simulate in practice with with pressures and, and different coverages and, and all the things you, you, you can do. But the speed of the game is going to be different when it's out there and live bullets are, 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 are flying. But uh, I think that both those guys have done a great job of just preparing each week, and we ask them to prepare each week like they're a starter, and they've done that. Will's injury in the preseason went on to say setback is preparation. If you got to a situation now where he had to go for you, do you feel comfortable that he could do it on a Sunday at this point? You know, we feel comfortable. There. Anybody that's on this roster right now, we feel comfortable they can go out there and execute whatever job they're asked to do. And whether that's Malik, whether that's Will, whether that's a guy on the defensive end, you know, that's why they're on this team for a reason. So we feel comfortable with everybody we have on our roster being able to go out there and operate whatever we ask them to do. What have you seen just from Will, like, like since the like, season has started? This is obviously a unique situation, right, to have two young guys like that right. anyway. So just from, what have you seen from him in terms of that? Yeah, you know, it is. It's a unique situation trying to develop two young quarterbacks. And um, I think they've done a great job. I think you've continued to see Will grow, you know, whether it's his understanding of concepts, whether it's his understanding of what coverage um, – it's being thrown at him and just you just see a guy who's getting more and more comfortable each week with what we're asking him to do and it's the same thing you know with Malik within the offense so uh, we're just going to keep pressing those guys keep pressing them forward and then when they're asked to play they got to go in there and operate we're um you know you're not focused on the fundamentals as much as we we need to be so that'd be the number one thing is just fundamentally getting back to you know eyes hands and feet in uh, both uh, protection and in the run game and just going back to the basics as far as uh as far as football goes, fundamentally uh, sound and, and working on all those things. How do you think Nick did? He's not as familiar with left as right. Mm -hmm. You know, Mike seemed like he was having value battled. What's made yeah. the challenge for him in trying to get comfortable there? And how do you think he did? Yeah, I mean, I thought he brought a lot of energy. You know, that's the one thing with Nick. You know, he, he's going to play hard, um, you know, and, and he goes out there. He he uh, he goes uh, – 100 miles an hour, you know, and he's throwing his uh, face in there and he's running his feet through blocks and just brings a ton of energy uh, to the game, you know, whether it's in run game, pass game. Uh, as far as comfortability, again, you know, you'd have to ask him, but but uh, there were times he looked comfortable and probably some plays he, he liked and some that he'd, he'd want to have back. But at the end of the day, guy plays the game the way it's supposed to be played. What did you guys see to go ahead and make that move? Is it more about, like, your – feeling that Nick was ready to take that jump or like was there something with Andre that you saw that was like okay here we go yeah, no, just just uh, you know, NPF having that ability uh, to go in there and and bring some energy and all those things, and and you know, it's, he's a guy who's played before and and done some good things. So just uh, him being ready to go out there and do it, and uh, you know, uh, timing was right there, and 
uh, he went out there and he brought the energy and, and, and did some, some good things. Anything change for your group if there's a change at quarterback? Excuse me? I'm Anything sorry. Anything change for your group if there's a change at quarterback as far as, you know, no, you got to keep them healthy. Yeah, no, them, yeah, I mean. As far as knowing there's a different guy back there. No, I mean, um, you know, as far as our guys go, we got to block the guys we're responsible for blocking. You know, we talk about protecting the quarterback all the time, protecting the guy with the ball, and we got to keep us in between the defender and the ball. And, um, you know, there might be some differences when it comes to launch points or, or, uh, where some guys like to escape the pocket and stuff, and that's just a general statement in football. And um, so I think you know who's back there, but at the end of the day, you got to do your job and keep your guy from getting near the ball. Just getting back to um, being consistent with our fundamentals and technique overall. I mean, when you lose a couple of games and, and um, you know, just look at it, we'll watch the film and make the corrections we need to make and start putting everything together. Because normally when we when we, after a game, you just look at the last game and make the corrections there. But now we got six games to kind of put it all together and um, figure out what we did well and what we need to fix. Have you gotten any clarity in the last week or so about Tier's situation and when you expect to have him back on the field? I I don't know. Honestly, I don't. I have no idea. So we'll. So your understanding is it all health related at this point? He's got. He's injured, so that's why he's not playing. How how, how much have you guys missed him? We we've missed him because he's been a, a starter for us. But you know, I think everybody um, looks at the last two games, which he didn't play, and say, "Well, that's why we gave up rushing yards." But I remember uh, vividly the New York Giants running for 250 yards against us in the opener last year and then Buffalo running for another 100 plus yards. So um, it's more about us just doing what we need to do, not necessarily who's in there.